Hey everyone, welcome to the 4-Minute Video for Developers Spike S series. My name's Justin, I'm a Cloud Platform Sales Engineer on Google's Apigee team. And in this episode, we're going to take a look at flow variables. Now coming in, you should already have an Apigee Edge account and a general sense for how Spike Arrest work. If you don't, go back and watch episode 2 of this series and that'll get you up to speed. Quick overview here, we've got Apigee Edge brokering an API conversation between an app and a backend service. Now the last thing we want is for our backend service to become overrun. Think of a denial of service attack, for example, or just a general high volume scenario. So we add a spike arrest. Now the cool thing about Apigee Edge, as traffic flows through, we're collecting a ton of helpful metadata about the request, response, and properties of those policies like spike arrest in real time. You can capture those properties with what we call flow variables and do cool things with them. So in this example, we're going to look at the failed property referenced like this, rate limit dot name of your policy dot failed, and surface it in a JSON response to show how we could take action based on whether or not we've exceeded our threshold or not. So with that, let's switch to the product and take a look at a live demo. So navigate to apogee.com slash edge, make sure that your organization is selected and click API proxies. Then we're going to create a new proxy. Select no target and click next. Let's rename this to something like spike arrest dash flow. Select pass through and click next. Leave these defaults checked. Then click build and deploy. So we have a new proxy. We'll switch to the develop tab and add some policies to change the way this proxy behaves. Note we have pre-flow selected. Along the request side of this graph, click the plus step. Select the spike arrest policy and rename this to spike dash 1 p.m. for one per minute. Next, we're going to click the plus step on the response side of this graph and scroll down a little bit until you see the assign message policy. We're going to rename this to create spike response, all one word. Click Add. Now once you have these two policies in place, we're going to make a couple changes to the config. First, click your spike arrest policy. Across the top here where you see continue on error equals false. Change that to read true. Down here at the default rate of 30 per second, we're going to change that to 1 p.m. for 1 per minute. Next, click your assign message policy. We've got some of the boilerplate XML here in place by default. I'm going to copy paste some code in place here since we don't need all of this. The important things to note, we're creating a JSON payload and we're injecting our flow variable, reference the same way you saw on the slide, rate limit dot policy name, in our case spike dash 1 p.m. dot failed. Once you have these properties in place, click save to make this take effect and we'll switch to the trace tab to demonstrate this in real time. Click the green start trace session button and then click send a few times to fire off some requests in rapid succession. Now here comes the interesting part. Take a look at this graph and you can see by clicking the assign message policy we've got our JSON response here as spike triggered false meaning the spike arrest was not exceeded. Click another one of these transactions and you'll note we have a red exclamation point here showing that our spike arrest was triggered. If we click our assign message policy again, you'll see that spike arrest now shows as true. So just like that, we've demonstrated how we can capture a flow variable and take some action based on whether it's true or false. Now imagine a more complex scenario where you want to change the behavior of your API or maybe fire off a log entry based on the change in this variable. So that's it for this video. For more information, visit community.apogee.com or check out some of our other helpful videos in this series. Thank you.